Hey guys, it's VDB Coin Roll King here, and I um, this is the video I promised you. So we are going to be going over the coins to look for in certain boxes. So we're going to start off with the penny box since it's the lowest in value. This is the Indian Head Penny, and this is probably the best find you'll find in a um, penny box. I have yet to find it, but I have found others like wheat pennies. So you'll see on the front it has a picture or a portrait of an Indian with the United States of America and the date. And then on the back, which we are going to look at, it has uh, a little shield that says, or a little wreath that says one cent by it. And now we'll go to the wheat cents. This is what a um, mostly uncirculated wheat cent would look like. Um, and then this is an older version of a wheat cent. The back will have two wheat stalks, one on each side of the one cent and the United States of America. That's called the reverse. And then on the obverse is the portrait of Lincoln. And the dates were from 1909, which was the best coin you could find, and then to 1958 is when they stopped making those. Um, in between the years, we uh, transitioned during the war to what was called the steel penny, which was made out of steel, obviously. And um, that lasted for about two to three years, and then we transitioned back to copper for, uh, I don't know how long, but we will go over that in a second. Um, these are worth pretty good money, especially if you can find them in good shape. A lot of them will have rust. Um, I've never found any in a box, but I have um, found them on the ground, like uh, digging, uh, like... Um, I'm sorry. Uh, metal detecting, which I, I don't, I'm not going to be doing on this video because I don't do that anymore. But <clears throat> anyways, now um, we covered the pennies. We're now going to be transitioning to the nickel box, the next value up. In a $100 nickel box, um, the best coin that you will most likely find is a buffalo nickel. And on the front, just like the penny, uh, it has a Native American or an Indian with the date right there and liberty up there and then on the back you'll see a bison or what we call a buffalo therefore that's why we call it a buffalo nickel and then on the bottom here you'll see the word five cents right there and below that if there's a mint mark it'll be between the e and the c and there's a variety to look for which is the three-legged buffalo which is in the year 1936 I believe and that is where the buffalo, when they did the stamp, when the planchet came down and hit it, you can see there's a missing leg there, or a weak strike. And that is worth a very huge amount of money. I believe it's in the thousands, if I'm not mistaken. And um, now we'll transition over to the Jefferson nickels. And this is the war nickel, which was also made in the war, and it was made of 35% silver. And that was to save the nickel for, like, um, bullets and other items that were used during the war. And these are easily identified uh, while coin roll hunting by the darkened edge, which is probably going to be very dark gray or a light to medium brown in color. And another very obvious distinctive um, trait of it is that above the Monticello, or Monticello, however you word it, will be a very large mint mark. Oops. And, um, like that right there. And it won't... Now we're going to transition to the 1938 Jefferson Nickel, which is the very first year of the Jefferson Nickels. Um, that one, there's not too much to talk about. So now we're going to be going to the, um, Silver Roosevelt Dime, which started in the 19, I believe, 30s. And ended in 1964. These are a very nice find. And uh, along with other silver rolls, if you open them uh, top-wise, you'll notice that they have a very bright um, silver uh, color to them. Uh, unlike the regular clad dimes that will have a goldish tint on part of uh, one side of the uh, dime. And so, this is what it looks like. There's no mint mark on the front. But on the back, it doesn't show it here, but right there, right there in between the olive tree 
and the torch is where the mint mark would be. And that's for the silver dimes. Now we will go to the, um, let's see, oh, we didn't cover the mercury dime. The mercury dime is one of the best dimes you could find in a, um, dime box. Sorry, I'm a little unprepared. But we will search images real quick. And this is a mer mercury dime. Um, like I said, these are the best you can find in a dime box. And you'd be very lucky to find one. Uh, I haven't seen any other uh, people find them in uh, coin roll hunting videos myself. But that doesn't mean they're not out there. Um, these ones are worth a couple dollars and up depending on... Um, what they are, uh, what their condition is. Um, now we will go to the Standing Liberty Quarter. These are very hard to find while coin roll hunting. Although I've never uh, bought a box of quarters, I've seen a lot of people um, coin roll hunting and never find them. Uh, like I said again, that does not mean that the, uh, people have not found them. And um, I have yet to hunt a box of those. So. These are worth uh, quite a few dollars, probably around, I think, $10 and up, depending on the value. And, let's see, the next one would be the Washington Silver Quarter, which are extremely hard to find. You can't find them in circulation barely anymore, and I've watched many and many and many coin roll hunting videos, and people have a very hard time finding these silver quarters, although it has been done. Um... These were minted from uh, 19, I believe, 32 to 1964, and these are a couple dollars and up, depending on the value. Now we move on to the half dollar boxes. Um, the best thing you can find, or the most likely thing you'll find that's the oldest in these, is this coin right here, which is the Benjamin Franklin. And these are... Um, sorry guys, I'm new to make videos, but anyways, these are the best kind you can find. They were minted, uh, between the 40s and 50s, um, and not the 60s. They were minted for about a decade, and I will have a portrait of Benjamin Franklin on the front, and a Liberty Bell on the back, and these are worth a few dollars a piece at the lowest value. Next, we have the Kennedy Half Dollar. And the only year that they were 90% silver was 1964, the very first year they were made. And these were made to dedicate Kennedy after his assassination as a president. And they are very um, distinguishable if you open them from their sides in a roll. So if you are opening them, and let's say the roll is this ways. Here, let me zoom out. If you're opening them this ways and peel them like that, then you can see the edges of them will be very bright silver. And then the next year that they were made, uh, 1965 is when they started making them in 60 or uh, in 40% silver, and that lasted, I believe, till 1974, 1975, somewhere around there. And then they started moving to clad to save money due to the uh, silver inflation. And um, those are worth good money if you uh, are trying to fill books and you come across more than one kind. It's good to keep them anyways because they are silver and they are old. So, and especially if they're in good condition. And now we move on to the very last kind of coin. Or no, that's all of them guys. Um, thank you for watching. Please like this video. Please subscribe. Um, please share with your friends. And my very next video should be um, more advanced uh, what to look for as in to like what to look for in errors and um, more advanced uh, coin searching. I hope you guys like this video and um, my next video after that will happen to uh, hopefully be uh, within this uh, late week or mid next week where me and my dad possibly will look through one roll of Kennedy half dollars and that is if we uh, 
people have enough money. So, thank you again for watching, and uh, I hope you guys have luck in your corner hunting. Thanks. Bye.